All right, uh, welcome to this tech talk today. Um, today's topic will be how we build um, our front end to optimize for website performance at jobs.at. And um, today I want to show you a few tweaks we did to tune our website. My name is Jürgen Ratzenberg. I am the head of technology at uh, Jobs.at and in my daily work I deal with um, a lot of back-end and front-end web development and technology-wise um, yeah, I work a lot with uh, PHP stuff and especially the Laravel framework. And on the front-end side um, yeah, we heavily deal with uh, Vue.js for our single-page application products. So you can find me on the social networks if you have any questions um, regarding this talk or you want to know more about Job City, um, just hit me a line um, and one of the contact opportunities. So what is Job City? Um, Job City is a small team based in Linz um, and we build a fast and easy to use uh, job platform. Um, we uh, have a big inventory of jobs uh, spread across um, all industries basically and um, among all uh, the municipalities in, uh, in Austria. And currently we have about 58,000 uh, um, active jobs, um, which is quite a lot, and also about uh, 830k plus sessions uh, per month. And um, yeah, that's about jobs AT. So I would say let's dive right into the topic of website performance and why it is important for us. So as you know, the um, tolerable waiting time um, on the web has decreased dramatically over the last years. So um, we use cell phones, tablets and other devices every day and we are online uh, nearly everywhere. So um, people are likely to bounce very fast if a website is slow. So to have a good user engagement, the website needs to be uh, fast so the people stay on your site. Um, if they stay there and they have a good experience, they are also likely to come back <clears throat> and in the end um, this also yields higher conversion rates um, for you for instance uh, in your uh, online shop. And secondly, um, which is also very important for us, is uh, Google. So um, search engine optimization depends a lot on uh, web performance so um, we don't don't know all the details how google um, ranks the, the sites but they um, clearly say that uh, fast websites are important for them and to have a good um, ranking um, you need to take care of this and uh, yeah i also included three quotes of quite popular and successful companies which once more highlight that uh, web performance is um, important for, for a business and that you should take, um, take an eye on it. So the question is when can I consider my website to be fast? Um, and there are multiple um, answers possible. So actually a lot of different metrics exist um, among this cycle of requests um, to the response. Um, there are uh, metrics like the time to first byte, which um, indicates um, whether um, your server or backend works good. Um, there are things like the um, onload event or the DOM content loaded, uh, which give you an, a feeling when um, the, the rendering part is done. But lately or over the last few years, um, Google introduced a few new things and they are so-called user-centric performance metrics. So they are more towards um, how the user actually perceives the loading time of the website. These are things like the first contentful paint, for instance, which indicates when is the time when the user first sees a relevant, um, relevant things um, rendered on in the browser, or when does the website become interactive. And uh, very lately, um, they tried to simplify all those um, uh, metrics into three um, so-called core web vitals, uh, which they put more emphasis on right now. So they actually announced that they will start with June now to make this um, uh, impacting the, the search rank. And so this will become more important. It goes actually beyond the scope of performance because right now it focuses on um, the loading time, the uh, visual stability of the website and the interactivity. 
and um, so this is definitely something you should keep in mind uh, when uh, tuning or, or uh, evaluating your website. Now that we are already at evaluation, there are different tools. Um, I think most of the web developers know, like PageSpeed Insights, which is around for years now. And there is also Google Lighthouse, which gives you even more details about also how compliant you are with SEO best practices or uh, progressive web app and uh, things like this. And the tool I really like is webpagedesk.org because it gives you very detailed insights with a waterfall um, diagram where you can really look into every, every request so you then know how long does TCP handshake takes or DNS resolution and so on. So these tools are really great and they give you a lot of hints where you are and what you can do. And what you can do is um, the next part, um, I picked a few things um, we did over the last few weeks and months um, and want to show you how you can uh, leverage those to, to tune your website. All right, first of all, um, one thing which I think is quite underestimated but very powerful are resource hints. Um, so typically the browser, when, he, uh, when, when the browser hits a, a resource, um, it gets downloaded and it gets executed like a JavaScript, for instance. But with those resource hints, you can tell the browser, hey, um, please do something else basically with this resource. And there are different opportunities. Um, the first one, the most lightweight one, is this called DNS prefetch. So you can tell for some resources that the DNS resolution should take place um, earlier. And this runs in the background, basically and the browser then um, can continue with the execution and when the, uh, uh, when the resource is, is ready, um, the DNS res resolution has already taken place, so it's much faster. Um, similar is pre-connect, but it goes one step further, so it also does the TCP handshake and the TLS negotiation. And um, yeah, these two things are um, recommended for especially third-party tools or where you build um, your uh, resource URLs dynamically so you can already do some of the work up front. Um, so um, yeah, for this it's quite, it's quite um, nice um, to optimize there. And then there is also prefetch and, and pre-render. So prefetch um, is especially for navigation. So when you can anticipate um, how the user interacts with your page, so you know when he is on page A, he will yeah very likely go to page B. You can already prefetch resources and store them in browser cache. And then when the user navigates, it's nearly instant there, um, which is quite cool. Um, and pre-render then really renders the whole page so it not only downloads the things and stores it in browser, but also executes everything. Um, you have to be cautious, however, because this yeah, um, obviously uses a lot of uh, browser resources and this should not be uh, wasted because it takes bandwidth. So especially for prefetch and pre-render, you really should know where the user goes and um, yeah, uh, otherwise, it does not make that much sense and it can even have negative impact. But all in all, those are quick wins in my opinion because yeah, it's just um, the, this one rel attribute and um, then it's done. And one more thing is the preload, which is actually not really a resource hint, but um, also a thing um, which is similar to prefetch, but um, on the current page so you can use it for fonts, for instance, when you know, okay, those will be used in a CSS file, for instance, then you can already preload them um, to have them faster available. Um, the next thing is, I think, already a de facto standard, I would say, um, but it's still quite um, important. So to have your JavaScript and CSS uh, minified in production because bundle size is um, yeah, also critical. So the files should not be too large and there is a lot you can gain. And the cool thing is that with nowadays module bundlers like Webpack or Rollup, or like you can see here, in we have this Laravel mix, which is just a wrapper around Webpack. You can do this with one or two lines to um, get your uh, JavaScript bundled and um, automatically out of the box minified in, in production. 
Um, one thing which is quite common um, when you do or when you run your website in, in PageSpeed Insights, for instance, is uh, render blocking resources. So um, JavaScript and CSS um, are uh, render blocking. So this means the browser has to hold um, the rendering and um, executes the, the JavaScript, for instance. And of course, sometimes it's necessary, but especially um, if you just see the above default content, which is um, the first thing the user sees, there is a lot of JavaScript which does not need to be executed right away. So very important to um, defer them and load, the, load it asynchronously. And it's also quite easy to do with just this um, defer attribute. Um, so then the browser knows, okay, I will download it but the execution takes place after the, the DOM is fully built and then the rendering is not, um, is not halted or interrupted. So the same applies for CSS. Um, we load all the critical CSS at first. Um, you could also inline it. We don't do this at the moment, but this would maybe an option because then you don't even have to download the file. And then there are open source uh, libraries to load everything else asynchronously. But of course, you have to pay attention to this um, flash of unstyled content, it is called, so that you really um, immediately load all the CSS, which is necessary to not have this blank page, and then it turns into um, the thing it should actually look like. All right. Um, then there is um, CSS um, frameworks, especially like Tailwind or Bootstrap, um, a lot of um, uh, yeah, websites use and they come with a lot of styles and actually just a tiny portion is usually used. So quite lately we um, saw in uh, Lighthouse that we have quite some bad coverage um, for some of our pages. And so we use this um, nice tool Perch CSS, um, which automatically um, in your build matches the, the things, the CSS classes you use in your template with the um, CSS file and then it automatically gets rid of, of everything which is not needed on this page. So very easy to set up with Webpack for instance, I'm sure also with all the other bundlers and um, yeah, it really shrinks your, your CSS files. But we ran into two gotchas as well, so you have to take care when you load um, additional HTML content um, via Ajax because then Perch CSS does not know um, which classes, um, yeah, doesn't know about those classes and they might have been removed already. And then you have, you have things that look unstyled and the same applies to single page applications actually. So um, if you use Vue.js, you can do this conditional rendering and then also you have to be careful that not um, things you still need to use at runtime <clears throat> get um, get deleted by Perch CSS. All right, and uh, last but not least, um, one more thing uh, I want to talk about is code splitting. Um, so before I also thought that it's best to have everything into one JavaScript file because there's just one file uh, downloaded by the browser and this is fine and maybe have one vendor um, JavaScript file where you get um, bundled all the third-party things. But actually it's much better, um, especially if your JavaScript grows, to split this into chunks um, and only load those chunks which are really required on this particular page. And there are multiple opportunities or possibilities to um, how you can do this. Um, in On the server side we for instance have this um, Asset Manager, um, which we uh, yeah, implemented on our own, with, uh, which then includes um, the JavaScript tag based on the um, HTTP controller we um, currently execute. Um, so we have a, a, a one JS file per route. But also there are other possibilities with Webpack, for instance, you can do um, splitting with the, with the Split Chunks plugin, for instance, or in Vue.js, if you have client-side um, routing, then you can also dynamically um, uh, import modules with um, this uh, ES6 uh, syntax. 
And then for instance, this customer login component you can see here is only loaded when it's when really the user navigates to this page. And um, yeah, it's also quite easy to, to do and um, very powerful. And um, yeah, shared bundles, you have also have to take care that they are not duplicated um, because um, with all those module imports, it can happen that um, uh, yeah, they are um, actually twice included, so you should uh, be, take care of this as well. All right, to sum it up, um, having a fast website is definitely something which is important. Um, then uh, for evaluation, use the tools, they are really great and it absolutely makes sense to know where you are before you start to do anything. Um, it's also not rocket science to tune the web performance. I know there are a lot of things you can do, but um, especially uh, PageSpeed Insights and Lighthouse um, give you very good hints and there are also great resources. Um, and uh, yeah, one more thing is definitely that web performance optimization is not a thing, a one-time task, but it's really a process because with every feature you um, implement and roll out, you could have an impact on the web performance. So that's something we also um, currently work on that we have really like automated processes which are integrated in our continuous integration to tell us, hey, um, there is something which does not um, look that good anymore. And yeah, so definitely something you always have to um, be up to date. And the obligatory slide I would say at the end. So, no, but um, yeah, it's a quite exciting times at Job City. So we um, expand our team, and um, we're also actively looking for new developers. So, if you are a motivated front end or back end, um, or even full stack developer, just go to our web page. Um, and I am looking forward to. Yeah, get new colleagues and uh, build great products at Jobs.it. So that's it. Thank you.